Hey guys, Max here from MaxRender.com. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys why it's time to rethink our approach to positive thinking. Because there's this, in the personality development industry, there's this great myth that you always have to think positively, right? You have to visualize the positive, you have to visualize the outcomes, you have to visualize where you wanna go and what you wanna do and who you wanna be and all of that stuff, right? And that is incredibly valuable, right? Because of course you need that positivity in your life to set a direction, set a goal, and then believe in that, right? But there's also a challenge because what research shows and what no one, I see no one in the personal development industry actually talk about this, but what no one really realizes is that positive fantasies and always only visualizing positive stuff can actually decrease your motivation to act in reality. So Gabriela Achenig, um, she's one of the world's leading researchers on motivation and positive thinking from New York University. I'm a huge fan of her work, um, partly because she, like me, is German, so we still have something in common there, but she's an amazing researcher, amazing psychologist, right? And what she has found is that engaging in positive fantasies, right? Constantly visualizing what you wanna do, right? Whether it's earning a million dollars, starting that business, running that marathon, creating beautiful relationships. If we only you know, keep fantasizing about those things, what it actually does is it actually takes away our motivation and our energy to act. So here's what she did. She took a couple people, brought them in a lap, right? And she you know, took samples or basically tested a blood pressure, right? And then she had them visualize and engage in positive fantasies about their goals, right? Then took the blood pressure again. What she found is that, you know, engaging in those positive fantasies actually decreased people's blood pressure, which, you know, at first might seem like a good thing, right? It's like you want to have a low blood pressure, right? But the reality is that that calm state, that blissful state also led to lethargy. It also led to actually, ironically, a decrease in motivation, a decrease in the energy that people were actually able to expand towards their goals, right? And so they felt good, right? Visualizing your goals, visualizing how great you're gonna feel when you become a millionaire, when you run that marathon, when you know you live the life of your dreams, it feels good, right? But in the short term only, and over the long run, what it actually does is it sabotages our ability to stay motivated and stay excited and actually take action consistently towards our goals. And so this is a huge insight, right? That, that positive thinking and positive fantasies can actually decrease motivation in our lives, right? And I see virtually no one talk about this, and yet it's such a fundamental insight from research, right, that we need to start applying to our lives. And so, of course, Gabrielle Oettingen, when she first found out this result, right, she was surprised because she wanted to find a way that, you know, dreams could actually enhance our motivation. And so she kind of kept approaching, you know, trying to change the approach, right? Trying new things, trying new ideas, right? And eventually what she, what she found was that there is a way to dream and to visualize your goals that actually does increase your motivation. And it's by contrasting the, real, the you know, goal where we want to be, right? The future of where we want to be and what we want to do with the current reality of where we are right now. So she calls this mental contrasting, right? Which is about getting clear on the difference between where we want to go and where we are right now and the gap between the two. And what she found is that by doing that, by not just visualizing a big dream, but also visualizing the obstacles that are standing in your way right now, achieving that goal, that actually leads to energization, right? Because to our brain, then there's this obstacle that it needs to overcome, right? If you only visualize the goal, it's like, okay, cool. Like, to your brain, it feels like you've already accomplished, right? It's like, I don't need to do any more work, right? You already feel good. But when you combine that goal with the obstacle that's standing in the way of right now, your brain moves into a state of action, improves in a state of, you know, approach, more, uh, approach orientation, approach motivation, right? Where it wants to start acting towards that goal to actually get that and feel that in reality, right? And so this is a huge and super powerful and super practical tool, right? And so here's the second tool that Gabriel Ettingen found in her research. She calls this implementation attentions. And I talk about this in a lot of videos, right? Because it's such a fundamental idea to overcoming procrastination in our lives. The basic idea here is simply if-then statements. If situation X arises, I'll respond with, you know, response Y, right? And so it's a matter of creating pre-decisions in our lives and pre-deciding in advance how exactly we're gonna act when there's certain obstacles, certain adversity, certain problems in our lives. So a simple example would be, you know, when I get back from work um, and I feel tired, you know, I feel too tired to actually go do my workout, what I will do then 
is I'll just put in my running shoes and I head out for just one minute. Do you know, just get started, right? Or if I don't have the time to meditate today and I just can't find those 20 minutes, what I'll do is I'll just meditate for five or 10 or however long I can, right? If I can't get myself to start that paper, right, for work, then I'll just open my laptop, I put my name on there and I put like the, and I write one sentence, right? I'll just get started. So it's really about getting clear exactly how you're gonna deal with the inevitable obstacles that you're gonna you know, encounter in your life. And the cool thing is that we can now combine these two systems, the mental contrasting, right, of having a goal and having an obstacle and the implementation of if-then statements together into one tool called WHOOP that we can actually use for virtually any goal that we have in our lives. Whether it's a long-term goal of, I wanna run that marathon, or maybe it's a short-term goal of, I just wanna you know, make sure that when I get back home from work today, I go for my 5K run, right? So we can use it for both types of goals, and virtually any goals, right? Health and fitness, uh, financially, you know, business-wise, relationship-wise, right? I wanna treat you know, children better, I wanna feel more connected to them, whatever it is, right? So I'm gonna walk you through the four steps of WHOOP. First step, the wish is really the, the goal that you have, right? Which might be, I wanna run a marathon, right? That is the wish, what you wanna achieve, right? The second part of WHOOP is the outcome, right? So what is the number one benefit you're gonna achieve from actually reaching a goal? Whether it's, I'm gonna be intensely fit and healthy, right? I'm gonna be proud of myself and it's gonna be you know, a challenge that I, I wanna you know, see what I'm capable of, right? It's a personal challenge to me. Whatever is the number one outcome number one benefit you're gonna get out of achieving this. The third key then is the obstacle, right? That's what we talked about. What is standing in the way, especially from the inside, right? Because yes, there may be external you know, circumstances that prevent you from achieving your goals, but in most cases, it's really the internal things that stop people, right? It's limiting beliefs, it's negative emotions, it's the inability to follow through on your goals, right? The inability to energize and motivate ourselves. Most of the times in our lives, those are the things that actually stop us from taking action, right? So it's really about getting clear. Okay, maybe the obstacle is, oh, I usually plan my you know, workouts at night and I usually feel tired then, right? And then the last cue of whoop is P, the plan. So what exactly are you gonna do to overcome that obstacle, right? Maybe it's, hey, go running in the morning when you have the most energy. Maybe it's finding an accountability partner. Maybe it's for you just you know, starting out small, right? Just you know, getting your workout clothes ready the, the, you know, the day before so they're right there and then just starting with one minute, right, which is another powerful tool. And then just, you know, once you're out there, it's usually easy to keep going. So it's really about getting clear on those four steps. Whoop, number one, wish, right? What do you want to achieve, right? What is the biggest benefit? What is the obstacle standing in the way? And how exactly, you know, the plan, what exactly are you going to do to overcome that? And so guys, this is really such a powerful tool that has been scientifically proven to actually skyrocket your motivation. And you really, no one talks about this in the personal development industry, but seeing your obstacles also, realistic obstacles, and then playing for them in advance is such a useful way of really you know, making sure that you motivate and you take action every single day along the way. Now, what's also important to mention here is that obstacles, while they're important to visualize, there's also, there can be a certain downside to that if the obstacle in your mind is too big, right? So if it's so big the obstacle, right, that it's for you unfeasible to actually accomplish it, what happens then is, of course, motivation decreases, right? In fact, it decreases lower than if you just were positive for fantasizing it. Because if you see this big obstacle, right, this giant thing and standing in front of a way, and you don't see any way, you don't believe that you can actually overcome it, you're gonna feel less motivated. And that's important to consider, right? Because it's also a way of, you know, really getting clear on maybe when we need to disengage from goals, right? Maybe if this goal, like, it is so daunting, it is, you know, it seems impossible to you and you're just, you're just not gonna do anything about it, right? Maybe in that sense, or maybe at this particular moment in time then, this is a, you know, sort of a message for you to disengage from that goal, to say, hey, maybe this goal right now at least is not for me yet, right? Maybe, maybe a couple years down the line, but maybe right now I don't feel confident yet to actually tackle this. And so you can use Whoop also to really get clear on what are the goals that I should absolutely crush and achieve, right? And what are some goals maybe that right now aren't really for me? So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you got a better understanding of why it is so important to not only fantasize about the big things we wanna achieve in our lives, but also to get really intensely clear on the obstacles standing in our way, and then make a specific plan for how exactly we're gonna overcome those things. 
So guys, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the subscribe button below to get more videos on mental mastery, what it takes to live an epic life. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.